Hey, what's going on? Oh, I'm cut off. Wait, let me try to fix this. This is not good. Hey, Louie. Hey, hey, how are you? I'm good. I'm good. It's so great to see you. Yeah, you just, you, you're very small on the bottom, the bottom square. I'm trying to position this so that I don't have to hold this in my hand. Let me try and do this. Hold on, please. Okay, okay. Oh, okay, there. Now, now we see. Does that work? Yeah, we fall. see you. Okay. So, well, it's great to see you. And how is the weather today in beautiful Miami? It's raining right now, uh, but that's yeah. typical summer weather patterns, brother. We get a beautiful morning. Uh, it's hot. And then by the afternoon, we get these wonderful thunderstorms that roll in to cool us down. So we actually like that because it gets too oppressively hot unless those uh, thunderstorms come in and cool us off. So we appreciate yeah. them. Mother Nature's way of just saying, here, here's a little relief from the heat. Yes. Here, uh, we actually, all the relief we get from Mother Nature these days, so we'll take it. Yeah, exactly. Well, we had um, a bit of a heat wave here in Los Angeles. So, uh, you know, and a heat wave to us is like anything over, what, 95? <laughs> I've experienced those summer heat waves over in Los Angeles, and they're dry and arid, so you don't get the humidity or the rain yeah. or the relief that we do here. So I feel you, brother. Much love to everybody out there out west dealing with this heat right now. It's no joke. Absolutely. Well, I miss seeing you around here, Louis. Um, for those who don't know, and remember, I'm sure you do, though, Louis was a co-anchor of the entertainment news program, The Insider, and I met him on the CBS lot. I was working at The Talk at the time and it's been years if you can believe that it's been like well like four maybe almost three, four years uh it'll be no you're right almost four years it's been past three years. 2017 when i take my last show there yeah Man, it was like yesterday but yeah i know isn't that insane well you know it's great to see you in in good spirits Thank considering you. that just you know a couple weeks ago you tested positive for coronavirus along with last, eight last others week. last week last week last week tuesday Gosh, last week already. Yeah. And you and eight others from your station, you're right. at the ABC affiliate there in wow. Miami, WPLG. How are you doing today? I'm doing fantastic. I, I remain asymptomatic. And today I got the results of the second test that I took last week mm -hmm. after getting my first positive. And that test result came out negative. Okay. So, um, which explains the uh, no symptoms um no uh no low energy um no fever that i've experienced these past several days so i went back today to the first test location because they're able to turn around those results in that same day so i'm waiting for those third test results to come in today and then i plan on taking my antibodies test next week to verify everything they say you should really wait about three weeks from the date of exposure before mm -hmm. you take your antibodies takes, uh, test because it takes about 20 days for your body to actually assimilate that and for it to show up in your bloodstream if you are, in fact, if you do, in fact, have the antibodies present in your blood, so. Okay, and when you, and when you took the test, Louis, did you take the same type of test or did you find a difference with the various testing if you took so more? The first test was uh, a drive up at, at the Walgreens and oh. it's a free test. It's a nasal swab. You have a nurse supervising your administration of the test. So it's done very, very safely. They leave the swab on a cart outside your car door. Mm -hmm. The nurse stands about six to seven feet away from your car and she guides you through the process, which is kind of scary the first time. Mm -hmm. basically shoving a swab up to your brain. No, not that far, but. I, yeah, no, but I've heard. It feels like it's up here. I've never really quite, unless I, I did that when I was a kid, my mom didn't tell me, but I've never quite shoved anything that deep up my door. <laughs> right. So that was pretty amazing. But, you know, it's, you know, you man up and you do it. And so, uh, and then you put the swab back in the little test tube and you put it back on the cart and you're good to go. Um, the second day that I went, I took my test, I did it the traditional way. I went to a doctor's office and I had a healthcare professional administer the test, just to be sure. And the second test that I took was also the normal uh, three to four day turnaround, which is what they tell you to wait for as opposed to the same day. So I don't know if there was a difference in the way both of these exams were administered as far as the results are concerned, if that had any consequence at all in the results. Uh, but I did it because I was asymptomatic. I didn't feel sick. Right. And my colleagues were dropping like flies. They were experiencing severe symptoms from headaches to nausea, shortness of breath, low oxygen levels in the blood, um, uh, pneumonia, um, going to the hospital. And here I am experiencing none of that. So I'm like, hey, something's quite not right here. Mm -hmm. I mean, I take very good care of myself, but it didn't seem to jive with, with what the rest of my colleagues were experiencing. 
And when you're at the station, many people are going to say, well, was the station practicing social distancing? Yeah, Were there the very, handy wipes? I mean, was that going on? From the very, very beginning, they locked the station down. They immediately sent all personnel home to work from home who did not need to be at the station. So our station was only manned with the talent that anchored the show. Mm -hmm. As a matter of fact, for the first few months, even weather was done remotely from home. All of our sports casts were done remotely from home. All of our reporters had to work from home and then meet up with their photographer in their own vehicles. They were not allowed to share any vehicles. Usually when you go out and you cover news in any market, you ride with the photographer so you can be wherever the breaking news is happening without having to worry about two cars and coordinating. But just to be safe, we had reporters meet photographers at the location of wherever the news was happening. And then only the anchors were allowed in the studio and the essential production team, that is to say an executive producer, mm -hmm. the uh, producer of that particular show, and someone inside the booth to actually booth the show, plus the director and two or three technical staffs. We had to have an editor there as well and, and people manning the desk. But I would say maybe we had about 15 people, uh, 15 people manned full time now at the station as opposed to, you know, the 200, you know, 90, 90 some odd people that we have there. Are, and I'm talking about 200 because that includes the sales staff on the second floor. But in the right. newsroom, I have a staff of about 95 to 100 people. Um, and that was reduced from the get-go to like 25 essential personnel only. And we had strict protocol. We had to wear your mask inside the building unless you're going into the soundstage to, uh, to do the newscast. Um, we were given hand sanitizers and thermometers. And uh, immediately when things started to get really, really bad in Florida, they started putting up uh, plexiglass partitions at all workstations. Um, and uh, yeah, so I would say that our station did a really good job locking this thing down and trying to take every preventative measure that we could, including the building of an emergency studio, which we built in the garage in case the main studio became contaminated and we'd have to move into a second space, which we did. Uh, but so this protocol held for, wow, you know, four months. It wasn't until last week that, uh, that we had our first breach and we don't know how that happened. But one person came in, probably asymptomatic, not knowing that they were carrying the virus. Right. And it spread. And luckily, we were able to contain it, just nine employees. But last week, uh, after all these diagnoses came down, they had all 95 employees test that mm -hmm. week, just to be sure. And I'm very happy to report that there were no more positives. So we were able to contain the outbreak to just nine employees inside the station. Gosh, that is such a relief. Absolutely. Yeah. And when it comes to, you know, your coworkers, are you guys constantly talking right now and just kind of we're how, they're how, they're, how they're doing? We're very tight. Um, so I've been, um, our main anchor, Nicole Perez, and her husband who's a reporter at the station, the ones that came down pretty much the hardest. So I've been texting with them almost daily just to get updates on them and how they're doing. They've been very, very open and transparent um, on social media, talking about their experience, um, updating, uh, their their progress, um, also doing live hits for the station. So they've been very open with the viewing public and, and that's been very well received and very much appreciated because so many people are going through the same thing. And to have somebody in a public position sharing their experience and being able to compare what they're going through, uh, through what, uh, to what uh, Nicole and Roy were experiencing was extremely helpful and it really resonated with this community. They received a lot of love and a lot of support from our viewing public and all, all over the world, really. So it was mm -hmm. good. In Florida right now, Louis, I mean, the numbers are yeah. insane. I mean, it's yeah. the state that has the most recent cases in a single day. We I think over broken all records. As of this morning, 10,000 last night, 12,000, over 12,000 again today. We are now the epicenter of the pandemic, from what I understand, especially Miami Dade County. Mm -hmm. The numbers are, are not good. Wow. And you've been very vocal about contact tracing. Let's yeah. explain to some people that are watching. You know, a lot of people at home are are watching you and going, wow, I cannot believe he's reporting on it all the time. But to actually have it happen to him, it's a real deal. But contact tracing is so important to make sure you know where you work, right? Well, that's what they use. It was the most effective tool that medical professionals used in, in Europe and Asia to lock this down. And what that is basically is once you test positive, you have a healthcare professional reach out to you and say, hey, we got notice of your diagnosis. Where have you been these past uh, several days that we can go back? And if you don't want to give your name, you don't have to. We can even contact people who you're close with and you don't feel comfortable divulging that you tested positive. So they do that all that for you, all that work for you. 
So you go through and you make a mental note of everybody you saw over the past week, every place that you visited, right. and you pretty much relate that to the contact tracer. And it's their job to actually reach out to people you may have been in contact with, to places you may have visited, like the grocery store or the drugstore or the dry cleaner, and say, hey, uh, someone who tested positive was recently in your establishment or someone who tested positively um, was uh, re recently in contact with you, you should probably go and get tested. And that's the only way you're going to lock this thing down because so many people are walking around asymptomatic, not knowing they're carrying this thing and they're spreading this and it's spreading like wildfire. Exactly. And I want to acknowledge all the people, Louis, that are joining. There are so many people that have supported you through this and, you know, really feeling for you. And um, I want to acknowledge them because they're waiting and saying hi to you right now. Hi, I, I can't, <laughs> I can't read uh, the name, <laughs> up, but I, I know that you're out there. Uh, and I appreciate again, there's, uh, there's always a silver lining to every experience that you have. And I'm someone that always looks at the positive of every experience that comes my way. And so if I can walk away with something is the amount of, of love and support that I've gotten from people all over the world has been overwhelming, such a gift. And it's, it, it's truly touched me. I am so grateful that I'm a lot, I'm at a loss for words to express my gratitude. I, I got emotional sometimes reading some of these messages because you don't, you don't realize how many people, um, you touch out there when, you, when you're on TV or um, even people who don't even know me from television who just follow me on social media and for them to take time out of their day to say, I'm thinking about you, I'm sending you love, please get better. Just, it's, it's, uh, <laughs> I know, it's, it's an amazing feeling. It's, it's, it's an amazing feeling. I just, I'm a very blessed man. So I, I, I don't take that for granted. And that's what got me through it. You know, I, I truly believe in the power of prayer and positive thinking. And uh, love is the most powerful force in the universe. You have yeah. no idea what is possible when you work and you lead with love. And so love has gotten me through this. And so I, all that love that I received, I put it back out there so it can heal the world. So, And they know you from TV. I mean, I know you personally, and you are a great person, as well as many of the coworkers that you've had in the past. You know, everyone knows that you have such a big heart. So I'm not surprised that it, it really affects you that way, uh, just by the person you are. So, and aside from you, Louis, you know, the thought of bringing something this horrific home to your partner, that's also got to be horrifying. I mean, many of the families here that are being affected by this, you know, they're self-quarantined, but they're also going, oh my gosh, I don't want to give this to my loved one. I, I want to talk to you about the freak out that actually happened at Casa Aguirre once this positive Coming. Yes. Was, came down because it was a chain reaction. First of all, yeah, mm -hmm. a small gathering of friends over for lunch the Sunday before my diagnosis. Now, when I say small gathering, three people, socially okay. distant. We've had people uh, socially over before that we know, close friends. And so the first thing that I did was I picked up the phone personally, and I called each and every one of my <laughs> friends on Sunday for brunch, and I explained to them the situation. They self-quarantined right away, and that's the importance of actually being public with your diagnosis. It's nothing to be ashamed of. You should want to you have to share it. That's the only way that we're going to get a handle on this. Yes. That's the first thing that I did. And I, obviously, I told my partner, Matt, then uh, all took tests and they all self-quarantined. And so it was a ripple effect. Definitely. It doesn't stop with you. It, it affects everybody who you've been in contact with. And I have parents who are both in their 80s. Normally, um, the tradition is on Sunday, I go and I see them very responsibly and socially distanced. Uh, but I see my parents every Sunday. And for some reason, that Sunday, I did not go see my parents. Uh, probably because, because we made merry during brunch and it was, you know, the nap afterwards, I didn't wake up on time, but the good yeah. the blessing was I didn't go see my parents. But the, the thought of me showing up at my parents' house, having this virus and being asymptomatic and possibly spreading yeah. to my parents, that's devastating. That's devastating. And that's happening all the time. That's why it's so important to get tested, not just once, not just twice, but three times if necessary. The, uh, the, the accuracy of the test results improves the longer you test after the date of exposure. Mm -hmm. So the rate, the median rate of pulse negatives right now is at 38%. That is to say that 38% of the negative results that come in are false negatives, which is pretty scary. It's a pretty high number. That is terrifying. Yeah. So I know, if you I test know. closer to the date of exposure, mm -hmm. that goes up to 68%, believe it or not. So if you test two to three days after you've been exposed, the rate of getting false negative is 68%. Whereas if you test 
six to eight days after, that rate goes down to 20%. The virus doesn't really begin to show up till four or five days after you've been exposed to it. And something else that I learned is that um, you're most contagious in the days leading up to you showing your first symptoms. Okay. So once you start showing your symptoms, uh, the rate of infectability also reduces. Those first few days before you start showing symptoms are the most dangerous, which is why there are a lot of people walking around not knowing they have the virus and spreading it all over the place. We're having yeah. a very, very tough time here in Florida with that. Our numbers are not good. No, they're not good at all. And I know this morning, as you mentioned, you were taking your third test. You were in quite the line. You showed it. You showed it to us on Yes. I, it was I, freaking I, insane. I'll amend that because that was the drive. I didn't know that at the time. That was oh, the okay. line. I was in the appointment line. So the, the line for the drive ups had actually closed because they can only, uh, they only have a, number, a certain number of, of kits every day. And so they, they, they know how many appointments they have and they know how many drive-up appointments they can take. So at a certain, at a certain point, they can't take any more drive-ins. And so that, that was the line of cars that we saw. People were waiting without an appointment to get tested. Of course, they service the appointments first, and then everybody else on that line gets, gets seen. Got it. Okay, okay. And, you know, there's always that debate with the mask. And, I mean, you know, here in Los Angeles, depending on wherever you are, some people feel they should wear it. Some people say it's their right not to wear it. Orange County, the same thing. What do you say to those people, Louis, going through this now yourself? I, I what say, do you say to those people who say, I don't want to wear it? You're selfish and you're self-centered and you don't care about other people. That's really what it boils down to. Because right now, they, the knowledge is out there. The science is out there. You can reduce the rate of transmission by wearing a mask. Not just to protect yourself, but to protect everybody else. So basically what you're saying by not wearing a mask is, I don't care about you. It's all about me. I don't want my rights infringed upon and screw you if you get sick, I don't care about you. That's the message you're sending. So you're selfish. You're a selfish person. That's it. Yeah, absolutely. That, that's basically, that sums it up. So going forward, how much longer are you in quarantine? So that's the big debate right now. So my doctor says um, that in any case, I am uh, probably, even if the, t if the positive was in fact positive last week, Mm -hmm. Right now, the probability of me infecting anybody is next to zero. That being said, the protocol is a 14-day quarantine, but it's 14 days from the date of infection or exposure, which is the big question mark. I don't know when I was exposed. So the, the most responsible thing to do is to do a 14-day quarantine from the day of your positive result. If today's result comes back again negative, um, and then I take my antibodies, which I'm, I can't really take until next week because it takes 20 days for mm -hmm. the bloodstream, then it's safe. But um, my station right now, this is the first time that we've dealt with this. They are creating new protocol right now to allow us to go back to work. The most important thing is the safety of my coworkers. And I certainly uh, don't want to go back to work and make my coworkers uncomfortable. I want them to be secure that I'm no longer infectious and they can't catch us from me. So that's number one. Yeah. And how about Florida in general? Are you seeing the shutdown of many of the places or some places still open with outside dining or what's oh. happening? raging debate going on right now, especially with our restaurants. You know, the, the, the mayor of Miami-Dade County wants to shut down indoor dining and just relegate that to outdoor dining. A lot of restaurants say they cannot survive the second shutdown. They've already taken the precautions that were recommended the last time. They've reconfigured their dining rooms. They put in uh, special safety precautions. They're, they have a, a strict mask policy and a glove policy with all their employees and everybody that works that walks into the restaurant. And so that debate is raging. Uh, gyms are still open, but the gyms also have to adhere to a strict protocol. Um, there are code enforcement officers out there making sure that everybody is, is actually obeying and, and, and living by those protocols. But, you know, this is something that we all have to attack as a community. No man is an island. This is a problem that's affecting all of us. And until we realize that we are all in this together, we're not going to get past this. We yeah. have stick together on this. We all have to adhere to this protocol. We all have to listen to the science and listen to the doctors. Mm -hmm. yeah. Right. And what else is happening in the country? Aside from coronavirus, we're still in the middle of this fight for, you know, justice and, and equality and that injustice isn't right. How, I mean, as Americans, we're obviously, our eyes have opened, but we still have so far to go with that, right? It's an ongoing dialogue. Um, you know, I, I kind of want to keep this just to coronavirus and not really get into that. Uh, okay. I have to maintain my objectivity and neutrality as a, as a journalist. And so I, I don't want to give my opinion on what's happening with our country, but I do pray for peace and I do pray for love. 
and I hope that we can find a way to unite. Divided we fall, united we stand. So we have to come, we have to come together and find out how to do that again and love each other as Americans, like we always have uh, through, through centuries, uh, ever since this country was born. We have been the United States of America. We need to be the United States of America once again. And so I pray for love and unity and peace. That's all we can do. That is all we can do. Well, Louis, I am so glad to see that you're feeling well. And I hope that the test comes out negative and that you and Matt continue to stay safe. And I pray for your coworkers as well. You, on my Instagram, I'm giving updates on, on how this goes today. And so as soon as those results come in today, I'm going to post that on my, on my IG. Fantastic. Well, I appreciate you joining me and sharing your story. You help so many people and all your followers that are watching. Thanks, they appreciate Mark. it as well. Appreciate it, brother. Be safe. Keep All right, Louis. Thank you so much. Stay well. Peace. Okay, bye-bye. Bye. Well, that is so great to hear that Louis continues to feel well. And let's hope that his result that comes out a little bit later today comes back negative. Thank you as always for joining me. I'm Marco Gonzalez, and I'll see you next time right here on the couch. Take care.